Hello, today we are going to discuss BERT. A BERT stands for bidirectional encoder representance from transformers. It's a bit mouthful, let's break it down. As I discussed the last video, bidirectional it means BERT that look to the both way of the world, the one before it and one after it to get better context from the entire sentence. Encoder in machine learning encoder, it take information or word and transform it into a different representation, like a number, like we did in the last video. And representations, it's like summarize or description that will help the model to understand the words in their, and the relationship between each other. And finally, Transformer. Transformer actually is a very good movie, but we're not going to talk about this. We're going to talk that architecture transformer which is built built upon so i want to imagine this that we have sentence like the big yellow in the sky even without knowing what is a missing word you can guess it's probably the sun because that's the only thing that in the sky is yellow so because the word around it you understand that the missing word is the sun bird does the same thing in a similar way, but in a much larger and smarter scale. It looks like a ton of sentences to learn how words will fit together and how they make sense in different situations. This make BERT actually helpful for things like search engine, like to understand what you are looking for. But today we are not just going to use BERT on, on its own, are not going to build it from the ground up. We're using something called Reberta. Roberta stands for a robustly optimized BERT pre-training pre -training approach. It's an advanced version from BERT. Where we take BERT, we give it steroid, it becomes much better. In a simple term, Roberta is like a smarter version and refined version of BERT. It uses a similar approach by locking the word around each word to understand the entire sentence and contents. But Roberta is trained to you uh, is trained on a larger amount of text and data and in a longer time so so it make it automatically better to understand language the improvement in roberta training process help it to learn more about the relationship between words and the contents of sentence it become more accurate in understanding the nonsense of the language and the smaller part of the sentence which make it even more powerful than BERT. Let's take a look at our code. Today we are not gonna build a neural network like we did the last video. We are going to use a pre-existing model on Hagen Face called the Roberta Base Go Emotion. From its name, you know it's using Roberta, not just we talk about, and it's using dataset called Emotion. Go Emotion actually is a dataset uh, built on the comment of Reddit. It have 28 emotion, so it's uh, not just six, which make it much better because human emotion actually very complicated. This um, model is very good. Actually, it's have been downloaded the last month just more than say, six million times in the last months on Hagen Face. So it's a very good model. So how are we going to use this model? The first thing that we're going to need is transformers, of course. So we're going to install it in a quiet way because I got sick from the old downloading information. We're going to import pipeline and we're going to task our pipeline to do text classification because we, wanna, we want to classify what kind of feeling that we have in this sentence. And we are using this emotion that we just talked about, Reporter Base Go Emotion. I call it Emotion Model. I give the Emotion Model a list of sentence, two sentences. The first one, it should be um, uh, a disappointment because he is not having a good day. And the second one, I'm sorry that I got delayed. It got delayed. So the first one is disappointment. The second one is remorse. So. Until now, it's very simple. There is nothing to code or measure here. But in a normal case, we will use it with a data frame or a data set or SQL database. So I'm going to use the last time data set that we used, the ISEER data set. And I'm going to 
call it. I'm going to load it and use the column, change the column name to emotion and text and get the first five. And the shape of it, of course, it's at 7,000. I don't need this much just for the sake of this tutorial. We're going to use 200. Then I'm going to create a symbol function that I'm going to give it a text. And this text will be passed to the model that we created above. And we just want to get the label, which is the emotion. So we'll test it on the text uh, column and get the five the 10 rows, uh, zero to 10 rows and apply the function that we created upon. And it gives us this emotions. Okay, so it's working as intended. So let's apply the Roberta a model that we created above, a lot of above. Let's apply the, this function on the entire 200 symbol that we created and put it in a new column. Let's call it Roberta Emotions. After a while, it got done. And this, what it's look like. Roberta Emotion and the emotion that we get from the data set itself. So I, I read a few ones, actually, like when for the first time I realize the meaning of this. This is can be fear and also realization. So our both are kind of correct. This is why I told you the emotions of humans can sometimes be complex, have multiple layers. So we can use both or different way to detect emotion and combine it together. And uh, for this one, when a car is overtaking another and I am forced to drive off the road. This is a little bit angry, but it's natural. Like I understand he's not like super angry. So it's a bit natural. So it seems like it's need like the emotion to be super verbose or uh, super kind of obvious to detect. But this is the natural emotion that we get from the set. And this is what we get from Roberta. It's working actually not that bad, but I told you, uh, the emotion can be sometimes hard to detect in terms of complexity. And uh, sometimes sarcasm is not detected or most of the time sarcasm is not detected. And unusual. When I work with model like this, I like to visualize the feeling and emotion. So I bought it in a plotly histogram and I buzzed the emotion that we created to get the amount. We remember we have 200 symbol only and I get the most repeated emotion is neutral. Second one, sadness and disappointment and realization. Okay. It's, it's, it's just to display a love to display visualization. We can display this data result for a company or someone who is not tech related. Uh, we, it, we can use this instead of using this emotion uh, data set, we can use it on a product data set, like a product or a restaurant review or anything that have uh, some sort of analysis that we need to detect the emotion inside it. So that's it. This is Bert and Roberta, how to use it. And it's very simple. Uh, I'm going to leave the entire code link in the description and got uh, GitHub repo and also exercise because remember, if you don't use it, you will lose it. And finally, thank you for watching. See you in a coming video.